think it's fair to say that at some point most of us will have been on an open top bus for a drive along some breezy promenade somewhere. In fact this is seen by most parents as a treat for children and it could be what has actually sparked a lot of people's interest in buses. So when did open top buses start then? Well this can be traced right back to the very beginning of organised public transport. In these early days though it was seen as a bit of a class distinction. With the well-to-do travelling on the plush seats in the shelter inside, while the hoi polloi, shall we say, travelled in the cold and the wet on the outside. The mail coaches eventually morphed into horse-drawn omnibuses, and the standard design saw the upper deck without a roof, while the inside was a little bit more luxurious. There was a lot of concern by local authorities about the stability of double-deck buses as well as the excess height caused by having a roof. So even into the early years of motor buses, it was the norm for the bus not to have a roof. From the 1920s, it became accepted that buses wouldn't turn over and explode if they were fitted with a roof on the upper deck. So this started to become the new normality. Both decks were now enclosed. The late 1920s saw the advent of the Leyland Titan, and the AEC Regent double-decker buses. And while certainly some of the earlier models of these were built as open-top buses, the majority were built as closed-top buses. And again, the Great British class divide tended to rear its head, with the workmen sitting upstairs on leather seats, while downstairs, respectable gentlemen and young ladies tended to sit on maquette-covered seats. The first operator to think of operating open-top buses on a leisure service by the seaside was Brighton & Hove in 1936. They were followed by Maidstone & District who ordered these Leyland TD5s in 1939, which were built brand new as open-top buses. Now unfortunately, as history reminds us, around this time a Mr A. Hitler of Berlin decided to take on the rest of the world and leisure travel certainly was put on the back burner. And it wasn't until 1949 when open top services resumed in South End. In 1950 open top buses were introduced to Western Supermare and from 1955 they started plying their trade along the front at Torquay. And we start getting into the decade now where the open top bus found favour with a lot of operators. Most operators chose to be head elderly double decker buses that had earned their living, made their money and were of a depreciated value. These buses tended to be painted in slightly lighter, more jolly seaside brighter colours with more white, more creams and more pastel colours to attract the attention of those people wandering up and down the seafront. By the early 1950s, a new phenomena had hit the open top market and this was of the convertible open top bus with Brighton and Hove being the first to operate this type of vehicle. So basically during the winter months the whole roof assembly would be lowered and bolted onto the top of the bus and in the summer it would be removed and allow the bus to operate as an open top bus. This meant that during the winter you didn't have buses standing around not earning money and your open top fleet could be used on standard work during the winter and in the periods when the wet weather prevailed the buses could still run but with the roofs fitted. In 1961, Devon General took delivery of these absolutely stunning convertible Leyland Atlanteans, as seen on the right of this picture. And this started a trend with operators, with probably Eastern Coachworks being the better known builder of convertible buses. Here we see the upper deck front of a Bristol VR with convertible Eastern Coachworks bodywork. In its roofed configuration, this sort of bodywork was built on Bristol low deckers as well as Bristol VRs. If you look below the window line in this picture, you can see where the bodywork of the bus meets the detachable roof with the thick ribbing. Also visible under the front windows are the bolt holes where the roof or the railings could be bolted into place securely. 
Other bodybuilders such as Alexander, Rowe and later Optair also built batches of convertible double-decker buses but not to the same number of Eastern Coachworks who built 50 of these Bristol VR bodies. Northern counties of Wigan also built convertible open-top buses. These been the equally well-known and equally popular Leyland Titan Queen Marys of Southdown. And these buses had a very long life, coming out of service in the late 1980s. In the 1970s, the open-top bus found a new life in cities on sightseeing tours. And initially, buses were hired or bought from seaside operators. However, other buses were soon converted, including the much-fabled AEC Routemaster and, of course, the much-disliked DMS-class Daimler Fleetline. As soon as the DMSs were being sold by London Transport, they were being snapped up by other operators and they soon found their way onto city sightseeing tours, where many were converted to open top. Although the irony is that when they were first introduced, many of the brand new DMSs were actually on the original London sightseeing tour to start off with. Now it might seem a little bit strange converting a single deck bus to open top because open tops are all about the views aren't they but over the years there's been several operators of open top single decker buses one of the best known is mateson and district that ran many open top single deckers including these aec regals in hastings again these been very long-lived vehicles many seen life well into the 1990s a couple of bristol re's also were converted to open top one for united and this one for Southern Vectus, which operated the Shanklin Town Service in the guise of Shanklin's Pony for many years. A Bristol LH was also converted for open top use on the Channel Islands. And how about this? An open top minibus. This is a Mercedes Benz, but there have been full transits and Sherpas converted to open top buses. Open top minibuses and midibuses seem quite popular in Spain and in parts of Europe too. The conversion to open top has also seen many elderly buses join the ranks of preservation as it has enabled them to survive much longer than they would have done under normal circumstances. Open top types in preservation, excluding the original open top buses from the early 1920s, go from things like Bristol K-types all the way through to this modern Volvo Olympian. Nowadays, modern open top buses tend to be low floor accessible buses. Again, these can be older depreciated vehicles. Remember now that the first low floor buses are well over 20 years old. Or as seen in this picture, they can be newly built buses. The open top bus is still immensely popular, both in the UK and abroad as well. You can find open top buses today being used for tours. Some are even used on normal conventional bus routes and just slipped in in between the conventional closed top buses. Whilst others are used for private hires, there's also a very big market for open top buses for weddings. And these are normally heritage vehicles like route masters and such. It's quite often to see an open top bus on a football team's or a sports team's victory parade as well with the team standing upstairs waving the cup at all their fans as they drive down the street. Over the years most if not all types of double deck chassis have been converted into open top buses and likewise most operators have either owned an open top bus or used an open top bus at some point during their existence. Now the thing I like about open top buses is that the conversions all tend to be very different. Each company specifies its own conversion. Each company would in the old days do their own conversion in their own workshops. So there was always a little bit of variety between the styles of the open top. A London Transport conversion will not be the same as a Southern Vectors conversion, for example. 
and it's always interesting trying to spot the differences and see who has made what. Now I always love reading about your memories in the comments section so please put your memories on open top buses down below. My first personal experience with open top buses was riding the old PFN Regents from the Hoverport at Ramsgate on the old 69 route of East Kent and that later changed into Leyland Atlanteans and a lone Bristol VR. I also remember riding on the convertible Bristol VRs of Southern Vectus. I later ran the city sightseeing tour operation in Canterbury using some rather decrepit old Leyland Atlanteans which were great fun to drive but probably a little bit of an operational nightmare with the reliability. And I've just completed my open top training for my current employer as well so this season I will be back behind the wheel of an open top bus. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the history of the open top bus. If you have, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it helps the channel grow. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye for now.